up everybody? I got surgery to repair my torn meniscus, where as you can tell from this photo, it was pretty messed up. But now I'm back on both my feet and I'm gonna show you what it was like getting the surgery and also if it was worth it or not. First off, if you're curious if you even have a torn meniscus, you're gonna to have to go to your doctor to get examined. Well, they will lay you flat out on that table bed thing and they will move around your knee to see if there's any pain. But for me, there was zero pain when he examined my knee and so I explained to him how I was having all this pain when I was running sprints. Thankfully, he believed me, which led to me getting an MRI then, which took a deeper dive into the tissues and cartilage within the knee. And it did show up that I had a torn meniscus. So after the news was broken, it didn't take long for me to decide that I wanted to proceed with the surgery. And it's mainly due to three reasons, with the first one being is that I wanna be able to run again in the future without pain in my knee. The second is that it is a root tear which can lead to arthritis down the road, and I don't want that. And the third reason B is that it was a relatively simple surgery where after recovery is fully healed, it my knee is basically good as new then. Fast forward to the day of surgery, it all went great. I was in and out of the OR in less than an hour, and after I woke up from anesthesia, I was out of the hospital in a blink of an eye. It was super quick, super easy, and very convenient, so. I had a great experience with my surgery and the doctor said the surgery went great. Now the recovery protocol for every person depends on what doctor you go to and what protocols that they follow. And it also depends on what type of surgery you get. Sometimes the meniscus isn't repairable and you have to get a meniscectomy, which is where they go around and trim up the debris around your meniscus, which in my case, it was repairable. So they were able to stitch it back together in place, which does require more time to heal where the meniscectomy can, my doctor said it would have taken two weeks and I would have been good to go. But I got the repair, so it requires a minimum of four to six months until full recovery. And in most cases, you're on crutches for a minimum of four weeks. And in my case, I was on crutches for six weeks. And I gotta be honest here, the recovery process at first, it was a bitch. Having to transition to using crutches for the first time in my life and only rely on one leg to move around was pretty hard to get used to at first. But overall, the surgery went well and I had really zero pain in my knee where I didn't even need the pain medicine after the second day. That was a really good feeling knowing that everything seemed to be going right. Then about two weeks after I had surgery, I was cleared to start physical therapy where it's very light and nothing too aggressive because you don't wanna really go past 90 degrees which could potentially tear the meniscus again. So you work in the zero to 90 degree range motion and do a lot of hip and um, glute and quad strengthening exercises. And so I followed that to a T when I went to PT and on the days I didn't go, I still did it every single day. And I also iced my knee like four times a day. So I was really trying to do all I could to maximize the recovery process within the first four weeks. Where I'm telling you guys, if you are someone who's watching this and are about to get the surgery done, follow your physical therapy to the T and do it on the days you don't go. It makes a huge difference and also, ice your knee between 10 to 20 minutes. And once you get through the first six weeks, it is a night and day difference from being on crutches to transitioning to walking again. For me, the first day that I was allowed to start putting pressure and start walking, it was like a different feeling at first because like I haven't walked in six weeks, but in a little bit of time, the range of motion started to come back. The gait apparently is what it called, started to come back to where one day after then, I was using the crutches to walk around with putting more pressure on my leg. And then I decided, you know what? I'm gonna put the crutches to the side. And I started walking then without the crutches. And so in the two days after being on crutches for six weeks, I was able to start walking again. Like it, it just fascinates me how cool the body can adapt. And now I'm five days without walking on crutches. I say, I can walk pretty good now. I'd say I'm, about 85% or so. Where another big thing that you can start to do is work up your range of motion. And in the case of the meniscus after surgery, a lot of scar tissue and stiffness builds up around the knee where it's it's pretty hard to bend your leg. To where the first day in PT after I was allowed to walk, like I, it was a bit of a struggle. My quad was shaking a lot because I haven't used the muscles in forever. But now five days after the first day I was allowed to walk, I can for the most part, Ooh, I think this is the deepest I've gone so far yet. <sighs> I can get 
a full squat in almost again. Now I know my knee isn't anywhere close to being 100% yet. Like I said, it takes about anywhere from four to six months to fully heal because cartilage is just a different beast compared to bones when it comes to regenerating and healing. So it takes time and I still got a long ways to go where I'm only at week six, but I am feeling great with all the progress I've made over the past six weeks and especially within the past like five days. It's been, it's been exceptional. Where now the road to recovery is a lot more smooth rather than bumpy. So my advice to you is if you are someone who is thinking about getting the surgery or already have it booked, just be prepared for what life is going to be like for about a month or so when you get the surgery because you're not gonna be able to bear any weight on that knee. And so it was a big difference for me so it's most likely going to be a big difference for you. So just keep that in mind and have all your resources together and in place so then it's a more smooth sailing of a recovery process. And just make sure you follow your physical therapist's advice to the T and ice that sucker and you will be in good hands. Another thing that I utilized over the past six weeks that I also found to be a really huge benefit is getting a compression sock. So this is a Comrade compression sock, it's like, 15 to 20 um, millimeters of mercury, like the pressure wise. And I find that when my leg is like elevated during the day that I really don't need it. It's fine because blood flow can get through. But when I was standing up, my leg would get not get a whole lot of blood flow because in your calf muscle, it has all these little rivets. And every time you press up on your calf, it opens up, your blood comes up through and it closes and it sits there. And so without moving your leg, you're not getting that blood pump through your calf muscle. And so I found out that when I got this sock with the compression, it helps to get the blood flowing within your leg more. And so when I'm standing and cooking food and whatnot like that, I found it made a really big difference in reducing the blood that's being trapped down my foot where my toes would be cold and get a little bit black and blue just from the lack of blood flow when I was standing up. So I'll link the pair of socks I got in the description below. So you can go check those out, they're on Amazon. I got one pair and I just wear the same sock basically. I wear the one sock for like three days and then the other sock for another three days then I do laundry. So you don't need to get like three, four or five pairs of them. I just get one pair and just kept wearing it again. I mean, I'm still wearing it now when I do stuff to where I went out on a walk earlier today and I found that it just guess still helps the blood flow in the leg. And so these socks are, they're, they're pretty badass. I gotta say. That's it for today, guys, where I hope that you got something out of today's video and feel a little bit less stressed and tensed up if you are someone who's approaching a meniscus surgery or, on, or are on the verge of getting one where I know I was a little bit stressed beforehand. And if you could, please like and subscribe so then you don't miss any future updates on my meniscus repair recovery. And in the meantime, I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your afternoon today. So I'll see you on the next one. Peace.